Arsenal 2, Wolves 0. Mark Donaldson, Janusz Michalik and Luis Miguel Echegaray. Janusz, starting with you, what do you make of Arsenal today? Uh, normal service resumed. Uh, it, it feels that way, right? Uh, tale of two halves. We were talking about Liverpool, where uh, Liverpool were uh, poor in the first, or better in the second. I think, you know, obviously Arsenal dominated from the opening whistle. I think that's exactly what you needed. Uh, in the second half, obviously Wolves had a couple of chances from distance, nothing special. I think it was in the first half. Uh, uh, was it Larson, right? Strand Larson yeah. that, that uh, header unbelievably saved by Raya. Uh, but that happens in the flow of the game. I just felt that Arsenal didn't really truly have to uh, uh, break a sweat. And, and that's exactly what's needed because... Uh, you know, Arsenal have just one objective, and that is to win the Premier League. Uh, anything else will be a dis disappointment, right? I mean, you know, they've come a long way from two eighth-place finishes. Then you're talking five-point difference to Manchester City and uh, and two points. Uh, was it two points or one last season? Two points. Two points, yeah. Uh, two points last season. So the margins are going to be very, very small. And uh, unlike Liverpool, when they used to have to deal with just Manchester City, Arsenal now has to deal, continue to deal with Liverpool. And who knows? Mm -hmm. There are a couple... Other teams that uh, may have a say. LME, Arsenal got the result. Did they get the performance? You know, the result was there, as you said. But I think there were actually moments before the Bukayo Saka goal where Wolves actually could have punished them. Uh, they were growing into the game. And there was one particular moment where David Raya needed to make a very good save uh, to deny the momentum. I mean, I think obviously justifyingly Arsenal won this game. But... It needed a special Bukayo Saka moment to just seal it uh, and make that victory for the Gunners. Now, I, I think that overall, the course of the 90 minutes, Arsenal were going to come out victorious. And Wolves, by the way, Gary O'Neill uh, is a very good manager and, you know, losing the likes of Pedro Neto. And, and that front line is very new. So, and they were away from home match day one. So, you know, I think they did uh, quite a lot, specifically in those first 60 minutes, to at least make it interesting. I thought Lamina was very good as well. But yeah, overall, Arsenal came out victorious, but it wasn't, you know, uh, so easy for them. And it shouldn't be. It's match day one. They're still trying to mm -hmm. work things in, some things out. But in the end, Arsenal came out victorious and surely they're going to get better. And just like Janusz said, you know, their objective is to win this Premier League title. So just get those points, get those wins specifically early in the season and, and see how it develops. But yeah, good victory. Bukayo Saka. My God, what a talent continues to grow. And I think he knows it. He he has to hold that responsibility this season. And he knows it. He's known it in the past. But more so than ever, he's going to be relied upon. But yeah, a good win uh, for the Gunners and Mikel Arteta. Yeah, Saka doesn't mind the pressure on his shoulders. He thrives on that. Janis, I'm going to take you back to yesterday, Friday, when Mikel Arteta met the press. And he was asked about a few things, including potentially the arrival of Mikel Moreno. I want to get to that in just a second. He was also asked, does he need a striker? Because we've spoken for two or three years on ESPN FC. Can they win the title without signing a striker? He said, I've got the goals I need. I've got the players I want there. So with Havertz playing in that role and doing well and Saka providing goals from out wide, if Mikel Moreno comes in and he's not in the Real Sociedad squad this weekend, ahead of a potential move, whose place does he take? Is it Thomas Partey? Or where does he fit in, Mikel Moreno, into this? Well, that, you know, you, you touched upon a number of issues there, right? Because Mikel Moreno will find, uh, uh, will find uh, a position and it's going to be in more of an attacking role, right? The, the, the bigger problem for me is the consistency at, at, you know, at, at six, really. Because, uh, you know... I, Looking at the game today, Thomas Partey, and you guys know him, right? I mean, uh, for me, I just don't feel secure with him. Uh, statistically, mm. today, he had a pretty good game. Uh, I think just enough, although he did make a couple of big mistakes. Uh, if you remember in the second half, uh, lost possession. when right? Nuri had that shot from distance. That was uh, very, very close. But otherwise, I thought, you know, I didn't think that the Partey was the, the worst player on the pitch. But I just... You just don't feel secure with him. Jorginho is there, and I think he'll be good in all those games and all the competitions. I think that's a bigger issue for me than it is uh, how you're going to find a uh, space for Mar Marino. Because, yeah, he can he can come in for party, no problem. You could put Declan Rice in that number six position. I don't know if it's ideal, but it's, it's probably going to be good enough. Uh, going back to your initial question, yeah, they're scoring by committee. And you look at uh, Havertz with a goal and assist, and, and same with uh, Mikel Saka. We have to hear, honestly, I think, say that uh, Kai Havertz is learning to become, or maybe already is, 
kind of a legitimate number nine right now. Mm -hmm. Now, is he going to be consistent? Is he going to be a prolific number nine? That remains to be seen, but haven't seen the end of last season, haven't seen European championships, haven't seen his movement today, and that goal, of course. Uh, uh, you know, you can kind of understand that Mikel Arteta probably is not going to panic and and uh, and be put against the wall to absolutely sign number nine. But let's let's face it, they do need it. It can help. Uh, they can all coexist because they will be finding on all fronts. So I do think that they could use somebody uh, at that number nine that nobody is going to question, right? How that player is going to do, that's another story. We don't know it yet. But I, I think it's it's good to kind of put these uh, conversations to bed. LME, with Mikel Arteta saying he's, he, he doesn't think he needs a, a number nine right now, he doesn't think he needs a, a new striker, how do you try and sell the football club to a potential new striker who might not be coming in as the first choice. It might be squad strength. If look, if the, if the player av available comes to the market and it's, it's someone who it's a no brainer and Arsenal decide to spend then fine. But that player doesn't seem to be available right now. And Mikel Arteta doesn't seem interested in, in signing someone like that, or it probably would have been done by now or certainly made clear by now. So how do you, how do you sell, someone coming in as potentially squad depth rather than a first choice attacker i mean listen i'm on the side that they do need a striker um mainly because of two things i mean when you look at last season arsenal scored 91 goals in the premier league only manchester city did more defensively they were wonderful 29 goals conceded but when you look at the scope of the matches that they lost, and specifically when you look at the end of the season, that's what cost them, right? They lost uh, some home matches, including Villa, of course, in the Champions League as well. When, when that congested schedule requires somebody to just get those goals, when things are not going your way, I think they're going to need a, a striker that can do that. So to answer your question, is it's very simple. I, well, it's not simple, but it's simple, at least for Mikel Arteta, to say, we need somebody that can alleviate the pressures of goal scoring. Yes, there's attacking options, but when things are not going Arsenal's way, which is going to happen, I do think you need somebody that can just make it happen, that can score those goals. And again, I don't even just focus so much on the Premier League. I'm focusing on all the other competitions they have to play. And if the Champions League is something that Arsenal really wants to win, or they go far in a domestic cup competition, who are you going to rely on? Eddie Nketiah? I mean, Trossard obviously came in today. He's not a natural striker. Gabriel Jesus, we know, you know, that he has struggled in the past. Kai Havertz, to Janish's point, I think he's getting more comfortable. But in the end of the day, I still believe you need a natural, goal-scoring, hungry player that can do that. And I think that's the selling point. I think Mikel Arteta says to whoever and says, we don't have that. We don't have that right now. I am actually on the belief that Arsenal will win the Premier League. Okay? I do think Without that Without signing a striker. I think even without them signing a striker, but I think that my opinion will probably be alleviated if they can bring somebody in. Now, well, is it a Victor Osman? Is it an Ivan Tony? I don't think so. So to your point, can it be just somebody that can get you those goals? I just think it needs to happen because at the end of the day, there will come a time when Arsenal will struggle. It will happen in a 90 minute game against somebody. And sometimes you just need that player, that poacher that can get you those goals. Arsenal don't have that right now. Yes. It's per perception, isn't it? I mean, you, you just don't want to leave it to chance because this is the moment, right? I mean, you can't, you, you don't want to leave it to the next season. Maybe next season is going to be the mo moment because you know what? Pep Guardiola is going to leave. And obviously, there probably will be some drop off in Manchester City. Uh, this Arsenal uh, team will continue to develop and grow. You can say that, but you don't want to, right? You, you want to deal with the present. And, and that's important. I think what may happen too is rather than signing somebody, uh, I'm sure they have players identified, but maybe they're not 100% sure. So, look, I mean, you can still do that within the season. I mean, this is a pretty good start, right? The key players, Saka continues to do what he's done last season. Kai Havertz, as we've mentioned, continues to get, get better, a goal and assist. And, and, you know, there's always that January. If you feel you need a push, you, you, you stay with what you have right now. It's a good start of the season. We'll see what happens in the next four, five or six games. If they continue to do what they've done last season and now, 
and the front three or four players, Gabriel Jesus, obviously, is going to get playing time, continue to score by committee, then you leave it at that. Uh, uh, and, and if you have any worries whatsoever, then you identify that players and, and, and buy it in January, even if you have to uh, pay over the yeah. odds. I think it's important to put context on this because we're, we're looking at maybe signing a, a striker and, and that isn't really the narrative right now to an extent after a game against Wolves. That could be the narrative at the end of a season if they lose the title by two points again. But as LME said, they scored 91 goals with pretty much the same squad last season and the goals were shared around. You just have to hope because they are not far away. They are really, really close. And you just have to hope, whether it's stubbornness on the part of Mikel Arteta or whatever it is, that being that close, if they don't get the title, and they never do under Mikel Arteta, then you'll look back and it's going to be the biggest what if. What would Arsenal have done had they signed a striker? Let's move on, because I thought Arsenal in the first half were exceptional, could have scored more. Any concern, Janish, in the second half that the kind of tables kind of flipped around a little bit and Wolves had a lot of the ball, albeit didn't really look too much like they were creating as much as Gary O'Neill well, would have hoped. As, as I said, just just the small details, right? Because, you know, and not that I want to go back to what we said, but those small details is, LME has give us the stats, right? How many goals they score, best defense in the league. It, it, it's not about that. It's those little games, right? I mean, one against Fulham comes to mind when yes. they lost. I mean, this is where, you know, instead of scoring three or four, you score one, but you get the three points. That's going to be the difference between them and Manchester City. Both of these sides score goals at will, of course, and, and I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, the issue that those details, as I've said, look, defensively, they're sound. Very good goalkeeper. Now, Urian Timber came in. It's kind of funny because because, uh, you know, Zinchenko, it's uh, it's like a bad smell. He never goes away. Just as you think you want to push him out, Manchester City or Arsenal, he comes back. I mean, I, I think I watched the game, uh, again, both games against uh, Lyon and Leverkusen. He may have been the best player on the pitch. And today he struggled in the second half. But Urian Timber came in too early to judge, missed the whole season, right? You have Calafiori. So I think the, uh, the, the strength in the back is going to continue. I still think that detail is in that midfield. Now, Merino may solve that, but that, again, is more uh, a player that's going to change things uh, going forward. And it's that that fine balance now. Rice is fine. Uh, I don't know if it was a cramp or a little injury there. Odegaard continues to be, in my opinion, you know, top two, I don't know, the best playmaker uh, in that league, right? I mean, he's key, key player. Yeah. I worry what happens when he, if he's not in the team. That's an issue to me. Jorginho and Partey, together, they can solve some problems, but but that still uh, leaves me kind of iffy, you know? I still like, you know how important those players are. We talk about Liverpool missing that number six. Look at Rodri, right? We'll see tomorrow against Chelsea. We all know without Rodri, <laughs> I mean, with Rodri, City doesn't lose game, games. Those are that de the, the details. And I somehow still worry who is the man, who's the anchor of that Arsenal team when it comes to that fine fight with Manchester City, Liverpool, and perhaps others. One area of Arsenal we haven't looked at before we got onto Wolves LME is the left-sided attack. They've got two really talented players, Martinelli and Trossard especially. Is it simply a case of Mikel Arteta riding the hot hand in that position? Yeah, because I think Gabriel Martinelli is actually the type of player that just like, you know, he, he glows on confidence. Mm. And, and when he's scoring and he was feeling good and he's feeling healthy, he's, he's happy then, you know, Mikel Arteta's more than, uh, you know, content to, to start him. And Trossard, I think, understands his role. And, yeah, I think it is about the hot hand. Um, as we saw today, you know, he, he put Trossard later on. And, and Martinelli, who, by the way, is also trying to create more of a cemented spot in the Brazilian national team, also wants to make sure that he con continues to develop. And I think that that's a smart thing for Mikel Arteta. And both of them know the message. But, yes, uh, to answer your question, I think it's about the hot hand. And it's about making sure that the chemistry flows nicely uh, with, with the likes of Kai Havertz, Bukayo Saka on the other side, of course, and the ultimate architect, Martin Odegaard. My God, what a player. Just watching him today. You know, when, when Arsenal didn't have the ball, Martin Odegaard was killing himself for this team. 
absolutely pressing the keeper, just making sure that everything goes. It's so interesting how he operates. And uh, I'm, I'm a big, big fan, obviously, like everybody else. And yeah, he, he's massive. But yes, Martinelli is more of a player that breathes in confidence. Yeah, so we, the more he scores, the happier that uh, Mikel Arteta will be. I, I'm glad you said, because I don't think we talk about uh, uh, Odegaard enough. I really no, don't. Oh, he's so important. He's, 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 Arsenal's, he's Arsenal's he's most just, important player. He's Arsenal's just most the... important player. Bukayo Saka may be the, the key talent getting the goals. Martin Odegaard, everything goes through that man. He is so key. So key. And you know, and he, he's a full package. He's not just yeah. keeping keeping the rhythm, obviously super creative, uh, can score, we obviously can assist and all that, but defensively he's so good as well and willing to work and willing to win the ball uh, ball back. We don't talk about it. Martinelli. You know, when I think of Martinelli, just quickly, it's, it's like, you know, his legs are, you know, two steps ahead of his brain. He's still unrefined. I mean, there's something special in him, but, you know, that hasn't come out just yet, right? He almost everything happens too quickly, and then there's that moment where you're like, you know, at times it's great, and there are times where like, what do I do now? So still missing that that uh, you know, but he's so young, you know, the final touch, if you will. What about Wolves minus Pedro Neto? What are they, Yanish? Are they mid table? They've got a good coach, or should they be concerned? No, I don't know if they're going to be concerned. I think this is the sort of club that, you know, the likes of Brighton's and, you know, Bournemouth's, you know, obviously they're going to bring in players. They're going to sell when uh, people come in for him at a high price, just like Pedro Neto. I mean, yeah. massive risk, uh, obviously, because of his injuries, but uh, superb talent. You know, I like what I saw uh, from uh, Larson. Where did he come, Mark? From Celta, right? I remember uh, yeah. 13, 14 yeah. goals last season, a big man. What's he like, 6'4", or something like that? You know, that chance he had today, uh, perhaps he should have put it away. So that would have been uh, more interesting for all of us in terms of judging Arsenal at the very least. What the reaction would have been in that first game, had he scored that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think Wolves are going to be f safe. As you've said, Gary O'Neill is a good manager. Uh, and I think... Uh, you know, this is the sort of team that it's going to find itself somewhere in the middle of the pack, maybe, maybe you know, 12th, 13th, 14th, but no lower than that, I, I don't think. How far are they, LME, away from maybe pushing top 10 with the squad that he's got? Because they're, they're so good behind the scenes and, and getting players in, selling them for a huge profit. That's That's the business model. Brighton do it, Wolves do it. But if they if they want to be more than just a, oh it's another Premier League season we'll see what we can do if they want to be potentially challenging for top ten and maybe Europe how far are they away from that? I mean they're not too far but the issue is that the competition specifically for those spots I'm not even talking yeah. Europe is difficult Bournemouth Crystal Palace I mean Brighton um, I know that they can push up higher of course you know this is going to be a difficult run and and the, the unfortunate thing at the end of last season for Gary Neal was the injuries. Uh, and so Gary Neal had to figure it out. But as both of you mentioned, they're very good at, at least the club is at like utilizing what they have, what they don't have and how to replace it. If you look at the players that left, Max Kilman, for example, right? Mm. Um, you know, he, he's a big loss as well. Pedro Neto, despite the injuries, pretty much everything went through him as well. And, you know, uh, Janusz mentioned Jorgen Strand Larsen, who's going to need a little bit of time, Rodrigo Gomez as well in the right midfield. There's a lot of chemistry that's going to be needed. But Gary Neal is a very good manager. And I think that that's going to be the ultimate objective for Wolves, to at least make that top 10. They're not far off it, but there's a lot of competition for those spots. Very difficult to judge after one game day that Arsenal are or are not going to win the title. It's impossible to say, but it is pretty much more of the same for the Gunners today. Excellent in a lot of aspects of the game. And they got their two goals, they got all three points, and they're off to a winning start. Arsenal 2, Wolves nil at the end.